Our first uh, session uh, will be on, um, on early pre-humans, on early pre-humans. Uh, and our first speaker in that session is Michel Brunet. Um, and uh, you will have half an hour uh, for your presentation. Uh, you have the floor, please. Good morning, everybody. Thanks a lot for your kind invitation. Of course, I'm here for the first time, but I enjoy really to be here. So I'm going to speak about what we are doing with my team in Central Africa. I'm working there a long time ago. I began in 85. So it's not a lot, but it's already something. Working first in Cameroon and then in Chad. Today I'm going to speak about Chad and as you see in the booklet about Tumai. So for that I'm going to show you some slides about our work and, of course, we show you some fossil. But if you look at the title, you have, of course, you have Tumai, which is for this time the earliest known member of our family, of the human family, seven million years old. The second sentence is, we are all African. Of course, the oldest member of our family are all African, at least for the moment. And out of Africa, we are all migrants because we are coming from Africa. So, hmm. technology, it's okay? Ah, okay. Here just to show you and to remember Charles Darwin and Alfred Russell. Charles Darwin is the father of evolution. I like this picture. It's the primate groups and as you know, there is a very large biodiversity. Primates are two main groups. We are in the right one. And in the group that we call anthropoids. And in anthropoids, you have monkeys, and on the other side, apes and hominin. 
um, with my team, we describe the the earliest anthropoid known in Africa. A long time, the earliest one were in Fayum in Egypt, and now one, two, three on the slides are known from South Libya, around 40 millions. They are the earliest anthropoid for the time known in Africa. Ah, well, uh, the question, there is a big question with no answer at this time. The what is the ancestor of the South American monkey? And it's a very interesting question, but there is no answer for this time. Uh, we tried to give one, and for that, we go, wow, we go in Antarctica, and you have here some slides from Antarctica. It's a very nice place, but it's a place where it's better for young people. Here is a on the left side is a molecular phylogeny proposed by Seitch and Wilson. And as you can see, human and chimp are two sister group. And they are very close in term of genetic. So close that it means that we share a common ancestor for this time we don't know this common ancestor and we don't know a lot about fossil chimp. On the right side, just to show you that very often there is several species at the same time of hominin. And as you know, there is another one uh, coming yesterday or the day before. A very small one, but very important. So, for the moment, at least, Africa is the cradle of mankind. Uh, I chose for cornerstone. Maybe you have not this one. You have not the same. But of course the first one is town child from South Africa. The second one is Lucy from Ethiopia, town child is 2.5 million years old, Lucy is 3.2 million years old. Then I chose 
Australopithecus Barel Gazali, nicknamed Habel, coming from Chad, it means west of the Rift Valley. It means also that it is the first Australopithecus known west of the Rift. And then, to my, always in Chad, but for this time, it's important, I, I say, for this time, because I'm sure an earliest one is coming, surely. To my, is seven million years old. We are working there in Mega Lag Chad Basin. It's a very small basin. Uh, 2.5 million square kilometers. So it's quite easy. In this basin, we are looking for teas, which are one centimeter long. So it's not difficult. Uh, it's, it's just in Sara, and you have a succession of uh, Aeolian facies and lakes. It means that the Sahara Desert is very intermittent. Desert, wet, desert, wet, and so. The last big Lake Chad, Mega Lac Chad, is 5,000 years old, and it was 400,000 square kilometers, just like the Caspian Sea. Here you have a picture of the Habel Lower Jaw. <coughs> Sorry. It's a typical Australopithecine. You can see the Lower Tusk, which is very typical of Australopithecine. Habel is 3.5 million years old, <clears throat> and as you can see, it's very well preserved. Look at the scanner. They are just like the scanner you can have with your teeth. On the right side, No, not this. Yeah. Yeah, to show something. No. So on the right side, you have the lower task. And as you can see, it's at the same level that the incisor. And which is interesting is 
all the blue point in South Africa and in East Africa are points, are sites with Australopithecus seed. And as you can see, there is just one west of the rift in Central Africa. And Abel Australopithecus Barel Ghazali. Barel Ghazali means the man of the Barel Ghazal River. To my, to my is a cranium coming from this nice desert, Joab Desert. It's uh, well preserved. There is Lara Joe, and as you can see, to my, the, on the cranium is a big brow ridge, which means that it is a male. For instance, Johannes uh, Haile Selassie, who knows very well Adipithecus, have seen a very small bow ridge on Adipithecus ramidus, which is a female, and this one is a male. The lower tusk is very small too, but you can see this lower tusk with a small crown has a very long root, very, very long. What we call the honey complex. Honey complex is a complex between upper tusk and lower P3. This complex in hominin is not honey. It is honey complex in apes. And here, it's typically hominin. As you can see on the left side, the cranium of Tumai is, has not the right shape. So with scanner, we make a deconstruction and reconstruction of the cranium to give to the cranium this, the right shape. You can see that here, the 3D reconstruction of the cranium and this reconstruction show that the cranium is typically a biped cranium. As you can see, you have Homo sapiens on the upper left and chimp of the upper right and at the bottom you have Australopithecus africanus and Sidanthropus. Both are biped. Here you have the construction of the Hondocast 
of Tumai, uh, the Hanukkah has a volume which is a little bit less than 400 centicube. Now, the reconstruction of the face of the cranium. And I think that the picture on the left side is probably very close to the reality. We look at seven million years, we look like that. In what landscape? At this time, with what we know, we have a big, large fauna associated with Tumai. At this time, we know about 100 species, which is a lot. And 100 species without rodents. With the rodents, it means that probably we shall have 120 or 130, about. Uh, all these fauna show that the landscape is a grassland with arboreal. It means that probably it was very important for Tubai to be able to climb to the trees. Why? Because in this fauna, we have described till now more exactly nine species of Machaerodont felid. No, this felid with big upper tusk, long. The small one is have a si has a size like lengths, but the biggest one has a size of a Siberian tiger. Only for the point. Ah, uh, okay. Thank you. So now, the same, you have always the blue point for Australopithecin. Okay, uh, in South Africa and East Africa. And you have three red points. These three red points want to show you these three oldest hominin known for the moment. One in Central Africa, seven million years old. Two in East Africa, one in Ethiopia, 
and one in Kenya. The bus are around six million years old. It means one million younger than Tumai. When you look at the fauna associated with Tumai, you see that there is no exchange between East Africa and Central Africa. But it's another question. Of course, all these results have been published in peer international review. And it means that our story is not a lineage, but the best image is like a tree with a lot of branches, a lot. Um, nature described yesterday or the day before, I don't remember, a new branch. So it's not finished, it's just the beginning of something. And as you can see, for the moment, we are alone doing the last 30,000 years. So it's a general picture of all her family from seven to now. There, you see just to say the estimation of our population 10,000 years ago is around 5 million. Now, at this time, we are going to bet to be 8 billion, not till now, but almost 8 billion. So, It's a big question, as you know. Of course, my team, it's a lot of colleagues from at least 10 countries, about not far from 100 peoples, of course, and I'm not telling you that when we are going in the desert, we are going <laughs> with 100 people. <laughs> we have not enough money. And in desert, it's necessary to have good logistic. And to have good logistic, you need a lot of money, a lot. And at this time, I don't know in Italy, but in France, it's not so easy to get money to try to get some 
old bones. Even if these bones are speaking about our story, it's a pity, but it's like that. But it's another story. Thanks for all, and if you have questions, I can try to answer. Thank you.